All right, welcome everybody. So if you haven't met me before, I'm Kelly, the plant-based kitchenista. So we do these classes about every two weeks. Um, there is a little bit of a, a jump and stuff because of the 4th of July holiday. So the next one I think is coming up on, it's the week right after 4th of July. So you'll see those, those are already posted. I've um, got those posted today. So today we're gonna to be making kebab sandwich, which is really fun. And it's one of those ones that you, you, know, you can take to all kinds of parties or cookouts and it's very easy to make. And of course it has jackfruit. And a lot of people have used jackfruit. Um, some people are not familiar with jackfruit, but we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to do a Mediterranean roasted vegetable couscous. So having, you know, just a sandwich, which can be a little bit heavier, and then having the, the vegetable couscous and having all the different kind of like grilled, not really grilled, but the um, roasted vegetables, it kind of balances that out a little bit. But fun things that we're going to be making. So before we actually get started and get into things, um, I'll have Jerry come up, introduce himself. And just to let you know, we are plant-based and we are no oil. So all, all whole foods, plant-based, no oil. And I usually try to stay like, like I don't cook with salt. Um, that's one thing I always keep it on the table because I tend to like salt a little bit. So, um, and Jerry doesn't. And then um, we try to stay low on the sugars too. So we'll kind of walk through and give you all kinds of tips and tricks and suggestions on how to do this. So I'll let Jerry come up. And if I'm looking over this way, it's just because there's a laptop here. So it kind of lets me see the chat, but then also anything else that's going on. So, yep, let me grab that. Welcome everyone. Um, Jerry Casados, if you don't know me, I'm a plant-based nutritionist. Um, I have a private practice. I do nutrition counseling, just try to help people transition to a whole food plant-based lifestyle as much as possible. We've been plant-based for 16 years. If you haven't heard my story, I did it for health reasons, heart disease is developing. Um, just went plant-based. I went to Dr. McDougall's 10-day living program to get off all the meds and in the process, I'm healthy now, reversing heart disease. So it's it was an inspiration. So I decided to go back to school, get a uh, certification and my degree in nutrition therapy practitioner. But we're just here to, you know, help everybody get healthier as much as possible. And Kelly mentioned the, the salt thing. We're trying to be very low sodium. We try to keep our sodium down. I mean, we only should be only doing 2,300 milligrams a day or maybe less 1,500 if you're on high blood pressure. But reason we don't use salt we try to stay sos free as much as possible but a lot of times that doesn't work we're just trying to be flexible but anyway i'm here to just answer any questions to throw it in the chat window if and i'm just going here to eat eat the food so see you later definitely eat the food that's one thing that uh i just thought about pepper but that's one thing that he's good at so all right so there's a couple things that we're going to get we're going to get going so I know that there was a problem a little bit earlier and stuff with the recipe. Sorry about that. When I noticed and stuff, when it got pasted, because I think it was V who asked me about it, um, there was the HT was missing. So thank you for that. And we've got that posted up there. So that's all ready to go. And then let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to kind of switch back and forth because I want to get the jackfruit marinating a little bit. The longer you marinate jackfruit, the better off it is. So this is, this is Upton's. So Upton's is a brand that you can find in pretty much all of your um, natural foods type of stores. I've even seen it like in, um, it was not like, well, there's Whole Foods, of course, but like uh, Sprouts, all those different places. And what, instead of, of buying the little boxes, which I think are like $5.99, $6.99, a lot of flavors, I go and I get these larger ones and they're coming there. They actually come from, um, I think it's food service direct, but you've got to buy five of these packs. And these are, I know, like 20 ounces, I think 35, 35.2 ounces size way off on that. Um, and it's really nice because I just keep them, you know, I keep them in a, just kind of a, a dark area and stuff just to keep them going. But I've had this one for probably six months now. And then I use them a lot for, you know, heroes and all kinds of different things. So this is a, just a nice brand. Um, and you can find Upton's and different brands at, at uh, on Amazon too. I usually don't buy the ones that are in the cans. Um, and the reason why the, the cans that I kind of stay away from is they tend to be, even though it says like, you know, it's like in brine or water, they just don't tend to taste the same as this one. So this one's almost like a, not really a freeze dried, but a really like a lot of the moisture out, except for just, there's a little bit of moisture at the bottom, but it, and it's darker too. You'll see it instead of more of the white and it just shreds up really nice and it takes on whatever flavor that you're putting with it. So we'll go through that here in just a second. But like I said, this is the one Upton's. And there's other kind, there's different brands, but when you look at Amazon, this is one thing I'd recommend on Amazon. When you look at them, 
and you look for these packs like this versus the smaller Uptons, if you do that and stuff, make sure you read the comments because there's a lot of times and stuff that people, you know, it looks like it's a great price, but then you'll read down in the comments and the comments will say tasted terrible or came in moldy or something like that. So really make sure that whatever you're buying is, is the best. Otherwise, I would recommend to buy the small little packs of the Uptons. This one also, if I, because I'm only going to use part of it, the, you can freeze it. So it does actually freezes really well too, which is nice. All right, so let's get started on the marinade. So for those that don't have the recipes, I'll walk through. So we're going to do a third a cup. So it's either tomato sauce or barbecue. So depending on if you want it more savory or you want it a little more sweet, I'm actually doing the barbecue sauce. Don't get to use that barbecue sauce that much. So it's kind of fun to, to use barbecue sauce. So do that. And then I've got a tablespoon of tamari, so low sodium tamari, or you can use coconut aminos if you want to. Or you can do the brags. There's all kinds of things that you can use that replaces that. And then I've got a half a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So just your whatever your favorite is. And if you want to mix it up even a little bit bigger, you know, a little bit more, you could actually put flavors. So if you wanted to put maybe um, like a, maybe a sesame barbecue or, you know, all the different flavors that are out there, smoked barbecue, that's how you could make it a little bit different too. Then it has lots of spices. So in this, I've got a teaspoon of paprika. Um, and then I got a teaspoon of smoked paprika, which is my favorite. So a little bit of both. Ground cumin and then onion powder, garlic powder is in this one. So I'm going to add those in. So a lot of the flavors that you normally see if somebody's making a barbecue sauce, you'll see the, these type of flavors in there. If you don't like cumin, I know that's one of the ones that's sometimes not preferred by people, then just leave it out. Put something else in or just completely leave it out. And then... The last part of the spices, so we've got oregano, thyme, and then there's no salt in here, but, and then the little bit of black pepper is in here also. Just add that in. You're, and always think about when you're, when you're doing spices, and I even talk about, even in my recipes, everybody's palate's a little bit different. You know, we've all grown up in different areas, <clears throat> so there might be some things that, you know, you, maybe you're just like, eh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of thyme. Well, then leave it out. But even when I say something like a, let's say a teaspoon of ground cumin, start low. Um, like I said, even on my recipe, start low and then go back and add more. So if you taste it and you're like, you're like, oh, I'd like, like a little more cum cumin, then get, add some more like a half a teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon. I always do it like with an eighth and then come back and then just rechange your, your recipe. Because like I said, everybody's a little different. So I don't want you to go over spice things because you can't, once you put everything on, you can't take it back, but you can always keep adding more. All right. It's got the marinade going. Okay. So let that set for a minute. So then 3.5 ounces or so basically a 20 ounce can. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it since this is not in a can and I'm just going to dump it in a dish. And I'll show it to you here in just a second. Let's just do a little bit more. Throw that back there. And then I'll freeze the rest. So jackfruit, when it comes in the, the packages and stuff, and even with the Uptons that you'll see, looks just like this. So this is, you know, you've got the big, large jackfruit that's that's usually like a kind of like a pinkish color. So like when it when you eat it, when it's fresh, it tastes like bubble gum probably um, honeydew and cantaloupe. It's really, really good, but it's a lot of work. So these are the little pods that they're actually part of the jackfruit. So they come in like this. They also have these seeds. So there's a seed that's usually in the middle. So don't throw these seeds away when you get the packet because a lot of times you're like, ooh, maybe I should throw, here's even a better one. I should throw this seed away. Oops, don't. <laughs> okay, hold on to it, Kelly. So the seeds like this, don't throw them away. They actually, you can actually just shred them up just like the jackfruit and they work just really well. So just grab, you've got a little bit too much liquid, which is fine with this, um, but just grab a fork and then just start shredding it up. It actually looks like, it kind of looks like beef or it looks like pork, especially with the coloring of the Upton's ones. And like the Uptons too, they also have flavors. So they have ones that are like barbecue and Thai. If you can find them in the stores, I've not always seen them in the stores, but they're really good. They make nice sandwiches or nice, like um, kind of like a sloppy Joe type of a recipe. So just kind of get in there with your fork and you'll see that it shreds up. 
relationship. It starts shredding up really nicely. And jackfruit is like tofu. Not the same texture or anything like that, but it, it one of those ones that when you put a flavor with jackfruit, it picks up whatever flavor you put it with. So as long as you soak it, then you'll get those flavors. So if you want it to be barbecue or you decide you're going to make burritos or you're going to do something else with it and you've got all those flavors, that's what it picks up. And the longer you let it marinate, just like tofu and everything else, the more flavor you have. I'm just getting the seeds because the seeds are take a little bit more squishing, but it's all good. Okay. So there it is all shredded up, all ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna add it into the marinade. Or I could have added the marinade to that, but easier to add it to the marinade. If you want, if the marinades, because the marinade is, is a little bit thicker depending on your barbecue sauce, feel free to add a little bit of vegetable broth in it or a little bit of water, you could do that too, just to make sure you get it really mixed up in there. But it doesn't take that much. There's another seed. It doesn't take that much of the flavoring to be able to have it where the, the um, jackfruit and stuff will pick it up. And the marinade, it smells, it smells like almost like everything that we put in there, in there together and stuff is like a, almost like a smoky barbecue which is good. But if you did the tomato paste, then you're going to have more of a smoky tomato paste. So depending on your flavor profile, whichever one you like, either one is good. Okay, so all mixed in together. I'm just going to let it sit here for a few minutes. I keep seeing little seeds pop up, so I just smash those down. But other than that, we are good. So I'm going to just let that sit there. Wash my hands. All right. So the kebab sandwich is going to be, we're going to be using pita pockets. I don't know about you guys, but we don't do a lot of pitas here in this household. We, you know, we'll do the heroes and we'll do the, the different things like that. But I would say pita pockets are not used a lot. So it's kind of fun when you can actually use them. Um, this is a really good brand. So you probably, you know, the food for life, Ezekiel. So um, Jerry, I think got these at, he's, he's good for shopping for the classes, which I very much appreciate. But these, I think he probably got them at Whole Foods, um, but you can get them online. There's different ones that you can get, but this one's really good. It's so the ingredients, because I know sometimes everybody's thinking about that. It's three wheats. So it's barley and um, beans and then lentils and millet and spelt. So all kinds of different things, but a little bit smaller size than your normal pita pockets, but they still work really well. No oil. That's the one thing that we always look for is the no oil. So Ezekiel for four colon nine is really, really good. So we'll do that. And then when we make the kebabs and then I'm going to start making the couscous salad, you've got your cucumbers. So depending on your cucumbers, you could, you know, you could actually do the, the English or you can do just the regular. These were regular, but I just, what I did is I just did a stripe on them. So you can see on the edges, I did a stripe and then I did them really thin because I'm not a cucumber fan. It's like cucumbers, mushrooms, and grapefruit are the, the three things that I'm not. But so when they're small, when they're thin like this and stuff, I can usually handle them a little bit. But you could also, if you wanted to, you could pickle them, which would be really fun. Then, of course, just onion. You could also do, you know, white onion, yellow onion, red onion, just nice slices of that because we're going to put that on there. Then we've got tomatoes. These are, these are like the, the, um, popper tomatoes. So we're finding that some of the large tomatoes in the stores and stuff aren't that good. So we've got the little, the smaller ones, which are really wow. nice and sweet. And then our favorite, every time I shred this up, red cabbage and green cabbage. Um, every time I shred it up, Jerry's sitting there with big handfuls and eating all the red cabbage and the, and the, uh, the green cabbage. So I always have to make more because that, that tends to disappear really quick. So those are going to be things we're going to put on it. And then we're going to have a sauce. So we're going to use, I've got a dairy-free yogurt that we're using. It's hard to find yogurts that are really good. And a lot of times it's hard to find ones that are, at least in the stores here in Colorado, the ones that are not flavored. So this one has a little bit of vanilla flavor to it because we couldn't find anything that was plain. So, but you could also use a sour cream if you wanted to, if you've got a little bit of a, like a um, tofuti sour cream type of thing, but even then it has a little bit more fat. So 
Um, so we're going to make that sauce. So it's going to be kind of like a drizzle that's going to go on the, the kebab sandwich, which will be really good. But you know what? You could also leave this all off the, the, the uh, yogurt sauce and you could actually go back and just do like a mustard sauce or something like that. So you have to read the question to me. It says it's connecting over here. If you don't have any cucumbers or don't like cucumbers. So if you don't have cucumbers, if you have zucchini, zucchini would work because that's that gives you that that kind of like nice flavor. I would say like it's not going to be the traditional kebab, but that's okay. Jicama would work. Um, what other things could you do? You could do a yellow squash because we're going to do that with the couscous salad. So those are all kinds of different things that you could that you could actually put together. So the cucumber, it gives you a nice, you know, like a freshness, but necessarily do you have to have it? No. I mean, if I ate it, I would keep the cucumbers out. So all right. So let me just give this just a quick stir again. So I'll just have you read me the questions, please, because it's looks like I lost a connection over here. That smells really good. It smells almost like a, like a smoky barbecue, which is really, I, I like that. All right, let's move the knives out of the way for a few minutes. All right, grab all the ingredients for the couscous salad, because I just want that to marinate just a little bit longer. This is always the fun part of the, the cooking. I usually, I usually like on Tuesday nights, um, kind of give you an idea of what I do to get ready Tuesday nights and stuff. I'll get all the spices and all these little, you know, little, um, little, uh, I guess, bowls, things ready. And those are great. And I get all that ready. And then usually on Wednesday nights, then I cut all the vegetables and get those ready. So this is the nice way of cooking, <laughs> I would say, because if, you know, you don't have to sit there and think about, you know, chopping everything up and getting things ready or just have it prepped ready ahead of time. It's really a nice way to cook. And the nice thing about these two, these two recipes, there's not a lot of cooking. There's, you know, getting your jackfruit ready, which you could do the day before and just keep it in the refrigerator and then heat it up last minute. And the vegetables the same way. We're going to put those in the oven and get those roasting. So lots of things you could do the night before or the day before, and then just have everything ready. Okay. So baking sheet lined with parchment paper. So I have um, two medium zucchinis. So they tend to be on the smaller side zucchinis right now. So those are really kind of, I would consider those small, but that's what I can find in the store. So I just small dice those up. You could make them a large dice, small dice, whatever you want to do. Um, just as, but what I do is I, when I do it like a salad, I usually do it small because it's more of the, the mouthfeel. So like when you get a bite, you get, and I see this with Guy Fieri on the, on all the diners, drive-ins and dives, but it's like, you get a bite and you get like everything in the one bite. So you'll get the bite of the zucchini, the first one. That in there. And then yellow squash. Jerry told me he had to go to three stores today or yesterday and stuff to find it. It wasn't like it was readily available. So I'm not sure what's going on with yellow squash, but if you don't like yellow, just use two zucchini or, you know, you could substitute in, um, just all kinds of different, you know, like eggplant, um, all those kind of different things. So just that same thing, yellow squash. That was basically, so the same thing to medium, but they weren't medium. They were actually really small. Use what you can find. Okay. And then, so just following along on the recipe. So we've got, so we're going to add the veggie broth here in just a, in just a minute and stuff. So we've got zucchini, yellow squash, and then red bell peppers. If you don't want to use red and you don't have those, but you have those little sweet mini bells, use those, use orange. Um, I would say green. If you're, if you're a real fan of green um, peppers, then you could use that. But if, you know, whatever color you have, and if you have the sweet little mini ones, then use those too. Those are always good. So that one is um, two bell peppers. So those were small bell peppers also, small dice. All right. So pretty medley of colors. We got the, the greens, the yellows, and the reds. So we're gonna add just a little bit of vegetable broth. So the vegetables are gonna roast in the oven, so at 400, um, but they're also gonna steam a little bit. So that's gonna give the softness to them and it's not gonna take long, especially with your zucchini and your, your yellow squash. Um, and then this is where you could add the salt if you wanted to, but this is where I'm just gonna add some black pepper.
And then we're going to get that in the oven. Go on the bottom one. Okay, so that's 400. So the, the recipe says, of course, like anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes, but really watch your ovens because every oven's different. And so this one, this is a gas oven that's behind me and it's probably going to take about 15 minutes. You're going to get it to where you're going to start seeing a little bit of browning on the vegetables, but not enough and stuff where they become these hard little chunks. So you don't want all the moisture to come out of the zucchini and the, and the um, yellow squash. So watch it a little bit. And it's a, more about roasting it and not necessarily drying it out. So just kind of watch a little bit. You 20 to 25 minutes, don't just put it in there and then just check it in 25 minutes. Check it all the way through and kind of watch it like I'm going to be doing. All right, so dressing, I'm going to get that ready so that we can have that set because the longer our dressing sets, the better it is also. So the dressing, we've got one tablespoon of vegetable broth. You don't have vegetable broth? water. That works just fine. And then we've got, yes. Great question. So convection, because I had a convection their last, our last oven and stuff was a convection. So it usually is about half. So I would start watching it about when it hits about 10 minutes. So watch it and stuff, give it a quick stir on the vegetables and mix them up because they're all going to come together anyway. And then it might be like another five minutes on it, but it may not. So I would say anywhere between 12, probably in 15 minutes that you could do. Yeah, convections are nice. You're lucky. I'm getting used to, I've always had, I've always had like um, electric and, and we had the convection and things like that. And the gas is a little bit different. It, it, it cooks a little bit different and all that, but over the past year, gotten really used to it. So it's nice too. All right, dressing. So we've got, we've got, um, one, so, okay, where, where did we go? Dressing, juice of one lemon. So I think I may, may have messed, nope. All right, so it's an eighth of a cup because I was looking wrong. So an eighth of a cup of vegetable broth. A little bit more. Juice of one lemon. You could also do lime if you wanted to. That would be another way to, to get uh, the citrus because you're looking for that, that especially in the summer times and stuff, that freshness. And citrus is a really good, good way to do that. And then we've got tahini. So a tablespoon of tahini, which is just basically the sesame seeds. Ses if you've not tried tahini, it's a very, it's a very nice um, kind of a nutty flavor. And a lot of times and stuff, you'll see recipes where they're making like a hummus. Um, and if the, the garbanzo beans aren't cooked like for a really long time and the skins are off of them, you'll see tahini used into them just to give it that smoothness. Put that down there. Don't need much. Tahini, a little bit of tahini goes a long way. All right. And then we've got clove of garlic. So just minced garlic. And then this is where you do the, the sea salt and the black pepper. So you'll notice I always say to taste or optional, I'll just put a little black pepper because we do like the black pepper. And then just grab a whisk. You will notice every once in a while that the tahini, if you buy the different brands that you buy, could be where um, it's like really, really thick. And so, and then there's, there'll be like the tahini oil, the sesame seed oil and stuff on the top. Just get in there with a spoon. It may take a few minutes and just stir it up when you first get it. And then once you get it going, then usually when stuff, then that, that really thick, chunky part will go away. They're also, but I haven't seen, I've only seen it once. I think it was at um, Sprouts, was a squeeze bottle of tahini, which was really nice. So not instead of having these kind of like plastic jars or glass jars and stuff of tahini, it was a squeeze bottle. So then if you're making like a pizza or something, you could just squeeze it on and then, and then use it that way, which was nice. I liked it. Okay, I'll just leave that in there for a minute. So taste-wise, it's like a nutty, so like a sesame, a little bit of sesame, nutty um, citrus dressing. So very light, not much. There's not like, like, like sometimes like with balsamics and things, it's kind of that bada, kind of bing, bada boom, and you're just like, woof. I think it's very, very light, which is really nice. It's going to be on the, on the couscous and the, and the different vegetables. So it's just a, you know, just a, a looks just like tahini, just a nice color and nice to go. 
So we'll just set that to the side because that's ready. All right, then we've got the dressing. So let me just grab, should grab one more bowl. So that is, so this one on the dressing, and this is for the kebab sandwich. This is the half a cup. Let's put that in there. out and the other thing that you could substitute let's just say no yogurt in the house don't want to go to the store fully get it especially stores these days um you can walk out with a i always talk about you walk out with one basket and it's like 350 dollars, which is just crazy these days on on grocery but if you don't have that you can also use silken tofu that's another way that if you want to stay away from the yogurts or the the, um, the sour creams or any of those kind of things. Um, but you could also make silken tofu into a sour cream. If you're looking for that recipe, just let me know because that's the way to do it. But this was the yogurt. So we've got a half a cup of that. Then we've got two cloves of garlic. So kind of more of a garlicky type of a dressing that's going to go on there. If you're not a garlic fan, leave it out. I get, I get some people don't like garlic and others don't like uh onions and all those kind of different things. Okay, and then we've got lemon juice. So lemon juice to taste, this one's probably maybe about a half a teaspoon that I put in for the lemon. So you see a lot of commonalities of lemon in both, so a lot of citrus in both. And then we've got salt and pepper to taste, so just a little bit of black pepper. And then just a little quick stir. If the yogurt that you're mixing it in or your, your um, silken tofu, that type of thing, if it's a little too thick to drizzle it on, then just add a little bit of vegetable broth or water. Just a nice mix. You could also, on this part of it, if you wanted to even pretty it up some more, fresh herbs. So you could add, you know, like some fresh parsley and some, you know, fresh um, like basil, all those kind of things that are out there, dill would be really good. I mean, anything with dill in it is really good. So that would be a nice, nice way to freshen it up for the summer and use some of like, especially if you guys are, you know, your places and stuff and you're planting herbs and you've got a whole bunch, just chop them up really finely. And then you could put them into this sauce and give a, a whole different, another flavor. So taste wise, very, very mild flavor. So it's almost like, like I said, like a, like plain yogurt with, um, with a little bit of, um, Got a little bit of kick and stuff with the, the garlic and then a little bit with the lemon and stuff, but not much. I would say there's not much flavor to it, but you also don't want put that. Um, you don't want a bunch of flavor. And the reason why is that you're going to have this barbecue sauce type of, of um, jackfruit. So this just kind of more just adds all the flavors into it and doesn't, but doesn't overpower it. So I'm going to put this to the side. You could also on the recipe, it talks about red pepper flakes. You could also add this into the dressing. And I think I was thinking about it instead of sprinkling it on the sandwich this time, I think I'm going to just add it into the dressing. So it gives a little bit more kick. There we go. And that was just like a pinch. So that's kind of nice too. It adds just a little bit of, you got a little bit of red color and things like that in it. And it's going to give it a little bit more pop, which is nice. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. So that one's ready. All right, so let's get, just check the vegetables. They are looking good. They're smelling good. You've got the red, the red bell pepper that's already starting to cook. So you get that smell of the uh, roasted red pepper. Just good. Love it. All right, so let's go off to the side because we'll make that yet. All right, so if you're following along, so we've got the shredded jackfruit. We've got it in the sauce. We've got that all, all going. That's been sitting there. So it's probably been yeah, right about probably a little bit over 15 minutes. Um, but if you can have it soak overnight, it's even better. I always recommend to do that. So we got that in there. All right. So we're going to heat some vegetable broth. Get it started. So just a little vegetable broth. If not, water, stock. Mix that up a little bit more. Mm 
All right. Starting to bubble a little bit. I'm gonna add the jackfruit in. This recipe will work with the canned jackfruit if that's all you can find. It's just more I prefer, I prefer the, the ones that are in the pack. I just like the flavor a little bit better. How much protein in Jack? Let me look. So just even just jackfruit to give you that one gram. So the serving size, there's 13 servings per container. So basically 2.65 ounces. So, you know, enough to fill like a little sandwich type of thing. And there's like one gram of protein because it is, it is a fruit. So it, because it's called jackfruit. Yeah. And sodium's really low on those if you're considered about that. So nice. No fat. Right there. All right, let's get a. If for some reason, when you kind of spread out your jackfruit and you see, like maybe there's a seed that's still showing because it didn't get squished or something, just use the back of your spoon or whatever you're using, your utensil, and that'll get that ready. Okay, so we're going to let this, so so if you look at, at the, the recipe, it's on um, uh, number four. So we're going to cook for about, you know, let's just say eight to 10 minutes. It's more, it's where it's doing that and stuff is more where you're kind of caramelizing it a little bit. And then you're getting all those flavors to really meld into the, the jackfruit. But watch it because what happens when you have vegetable broth, vegetable broth burns off a lot faster than water. So if you're busy doing lots of other things, it'll burn off really quick. And you'll see this and I'll add just a little bit more, but you don't want to make it too runny because then, because you're putting it into a sandwich. And so you don't want to have a lot of moisture with it, but you want to have enough to where it doesn't burn. So if you ever like making something like caramelized onions uh, is something that's coming up in a class that we're going to do because a lot of people ask about that. Everybody's always like, oh, you can't caramelize onions, which you can. And they're really, really good. And you could make like a whole bunch of caramelized onions. You can put them on, you know, the burgers and you can put them on salads and potatoes and that it's, it's a mixture of, you know, like slowly kind of cooking it, but having vegetable broth in there. And the darker the vegetable broth that you get, like sometimes you'll have to get like the Imagine series or something because they tend to be more kind of like the brown yellows, but it's a little bit of vegetable broth, a little bit of water, and it's just, it's going back and forth until your onions get really, really caramelized. And then just store them in a mason jar and guarantee you, you use them during the week. They're really, really good. That smells really good. Probably about two more minutes on that. Okay, so the salad wise, we'll get that ready in a bowl. So couscous, probably not an ingredient or um, probably not something that a lot of people use. Bob's Red Mill has a really good couscous. And I had not seen this one before and it's really pretty. It is a tricolor. So it's got, it's got the orange and the greens and the white. So Bob's Red Mill actually carries that. And I'll just kind of hold it up a little bit. So tricolor pearl couscous. Jerry found that. I don't know, did you get the Whole Foods or Sprouts? Sprouts, okay. So it's really good. It's, and it gives you the, the instructions and stuff. So of course it says, you know, toast the, the couscous in one tablespoon of butter or oil for three to five minutes. You can actually do it in a dry skillet. So just kind of start toasting it up. Um, and it just, it gives it just a nice kind of more nuttier flavor. And then you add in the water. So you're gonna boil it, let it boil for a couple minutes. And then once, once it's uh, boiled and stuff, then you just turn it down to really, really low simmer. So it's almost like quinoa, but quinoa, you turn off the heat, turn it down to really low simmer, put a lid on it, and then just watch it. It depends. This one said it would take about 15 minutes to, to actually soften. It probably took about 10 minutes. Yeah, so six grams of protein. But like this one, so it looks just, it kind of looks like lentils. So really small little pieces and it almost looks like carrots and lentils and kind of a white grain. Um, but it's more so couscous and stuff is, put that in there. It talks about, it says they're delightfully, delight, bleh, delightfully nutty, chewy balls of toasted semolina flour. 
So it's basically in the pasta family. So versus, versus like the lentils and things like that. So once you cook them up, they get a little bit bigger like that. But I thought tricolor, isn't that pretty? I mean, just adding, you know, one more color and stuff to the dish. Stir my jackfruit a little bit. Don't want to burn it. All right, so couscous. And it's like, kind of like, they say it's, you know, they always talk about couscous as like little balls. This one is actually kind of like little puff disc is what it looks like. But a nice, nice alternative to, you know, instead of doing like noodle salads or, or um, you know, like real big pasta salads, you could use couscous instead. And a lot of people really love couscous. So nice, pretty colors, very summery. It smells good. It smells, it smells like real barbecue, which is nice. So I keep finding little pieces of the seed. So I just mash it up. Couple more minutes. All right. So we're making the salad. So we've got the we've got the the lemon tahini dressing. So we're going to put this over here. So we'll get that ready. So we've got everything whisked together. Everything with that. We've got the couscous all ready. So we're going to add the roasted vegetables here in a minute. We're also going to do parsley. I didn't have any fresh parsley, so I just used dried parsley. Adds nice color. You could also, if you wanted to change it up and not make it so more Mediterranean, you could actually do it like, you know, put basil, fresh basil in it, um, all kinds of different other herbs that you have in your garden. There was one time I think we tried, and I've not seen it since, but somebody was growing using one of those um, water I can't think what they're called, but they're water light systems. And they actually made a lemon basil and brought it into one of our cooking classes. Oh my gosh, that was the best thing I've ever tried. Have not seen it since, have not been able to find it to, to grow it. But it was really good. That would be really good in here. Okay, still cooking. Some of the, most of the moisture is out of it. So I'm gonna keep it, let it keep going. And then we're going to add some scallions. I'm not going to add all the scallions in it just because I want to have some that to decorate the top. If you don't have scallions, you could actually use like um, shallots. You could use just, you know, cut your onions. If you want to put a little bit of onion in it, put like a red onion and then just cut it really, really small. But be careful on your red onions right now. I don't know if it's just Denver, but probably not Colorado. It is, they tend to be very, um, very strong. Almost like, you know, your eyes start crying the minute you try to cut into them. So a little bit of red onion goes a long way. But, you know, just looking at that right now, it's pretty. It's got the green colors and the kind of the peachy colors and, and all that. So that's ready. This will go off the side. And then I'm going to pull out the vegetables. Those are looking pretty good. So there's some browning on some of them and then there's there's more they're they're really nicely done so they're like an al dente which is exactly where you want your zucchini and your your yellow squash to be and then your red your red bell pepper and stuff is soft so this is perfect this is a salad you can make it um, ahead of time and you can serve it cold or you can serve it hot so since we're doing the sandwiches and everything else tonight we're gonna have it warm which will be great okay so let me get this out of the way This is what I like about parchment paper. Grab it up. Some sticks. Let me grab this out of the way since it's hot. 
and pick up one yellow squash that I dumped on the floor. There we go. Smells so good. There's nothing better than the smell of roasted vegetables. So even if, you know, thinking about this recipe, if you're going to a party and stuff, you could actually do like little red potatoes, um, some of the little fingerlings, like the purple ones, you could roast those up in there and then maybe even do like some of the red onion. So you could just keep adding different vegetables in this. You could actually do some broccoli, cauliflower. I mean, the more you add, the more people are going to go gravitate towards that. So just color wise, I mean, look at that already. And that's just, that's just the base of the recipe. Take this recipe and just keep adding like more vegetables and things like that. And then just, this could be good. Like if it was warm, put it on a, a potato. You could put it, um, you could have a salad the next day. You could put arugula with it. Um, just regular, you know, red leaf lettuce. Yeah, put it in a pita pocket. So many things you could do with it. All right. Let me heat up the pita so I can get all this going. So you can either take the pita pocket and you could slice it and then you can open it up. I'm just going to actually make it where they're going to be half like that. Because sometimes when you try to cut them open, they don't necessarily cut, no, cut open the nicest. So this will be, you know, if I think about it, if I've got it like, you know, half, half a sandwich, this is a really good size of a sandwich. So let me just get them in there and heat them up. I've already turned off the oven. That looks delicious. So there is the jackfruit. Said you can keep cooking it as long as you want, um, but this has been going. So it's nice and it's gotten all the, the moisture out of it. It's got all the flavors in it. So if I taste it before I put it in anything else. It's like a smoky, I got a piece on the side of my mouth. Um, smoky barbecue, it's kind of what it tastes like. So if you had the tomato sauce and stuff, it'd be more of a smoky, smoky tomato. All right, pause clear. I'm gonna turn, we have a light bulb that goes right there, so. All right, let's get dishes. So I'm gonna add the tahini dressing. I'm only gonna pour a part of it on there because I wanna try it and taste it. Because sometimes when you add all the dressing, it's too much. This is where we're going to add a little black pepper. You could also add a little avocado to this. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. It's really good. Very. You've got all the different textures that go that are in your mouth but very light as far as like flavor and, and everything else that's in it. That's nice. Just add a little bit more. I'll set that to the side. And then comes the kebab sandwiches. This stores, as long as you keep it covered and stuff, stores in the refrigerator four to five days and probably even a little bit longer than that, depending on your refrigerator and your temperature. I'm just gonna add. So normally if it wasn't a cooking class, it would have stayed in this bowl. But since it's a cooking class and I always take pictures of everything, it goes into a pretty bowl. Scallions. I think I dropped them all over the place. Scallions are one of those things that when you have them around, just doing like a side, like a diagonal cut on the on the greens part just makes it so pretty and that you can add them to everything. So there is my Mediterranean roasted vegetable couscous salad. Yum. Healthy, nice, good, all those things. So I'll put that to the side here. I got scallions everywhere. All right, so then... these out. Use the bigger one. So if you want, you could always add, I'll do it this way. 
If you want, you could always add the, the dressing um, into it in the middle part, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm gonna use that as a drizzle on the top. The other way too, that if you wanted with your jackfruit, instead of cooking it in a pan, once you mix everything together, you could put it on parchment paper and then put, um, and then put it in the oven. Grab a spoon. Put it in the oven and then you could roast it out that way too. That's another easy way. Since you have the vegetables roasting, if you're making the same recipes, you might as well put the jackfruit in there too. So you're not having to do two different things at once. Okay, we're gonna get this to the keep. There we go. Put as much or as little jackfruit as you want. Then we've got all these different ingredients. So we've got the cabbages, the tomatoes, the onions. So play with it a little bit because that's what makes it pretty. A little bit of onion. Cucumber. It's about the same size. Then you've got your green cabbage. Could be Napa cabbage if you didn't want to use just the green. And you don't have to be as particular as I am. It's more for pictures, so. You could also, if you didn't have cabbage and didn't want and didn't and just don't want to have it around as much, you know, pretty actually I have lettuces and stuff. And I know I forgot one lettuce. Let me grab it. I knew I forgot something. My little uh, keeping my lettuce fresh. So this is going on a week and a half for lettuces that didn't hear. And I have some, say, beautiful red leaf. That, put that back on. These are wonderful. Put that back in there. And then, all right, don't want to go on there. You'll stay off. Sauce. Probably not gonna stick. So I'm going to grab a toothpick. May not hold it. There we go. That's the thing about PETA. It gets a, has a tendency to not hold everything as pretty as it should. Right. Grab one more plate because it's not wanting to stay together. And then going to be a messy sandwich. There we go. So, a couple little scallions for some color. All right. Voila. So truthfully, you could, if you wanted to, you could, like I said, cut it, cut it open and then stuff the pita pocket. But even then, sometimes pitas, they hold up and sometimes they don't. Um, these tend to be 
probably a little bit more fragile than other Peters that I've used. So I'm gonna scoot it back a little bit so you can see everything. So there is, that is the kebab sandwich that's all ready to go. So pretty much if you think about like, you know, why is it kebab? It's pretty much all the different things that you would put on a kebab, except for of course the, the cabbages. But even then, you know, you could always grill a, a cabbage ahead of cabbage too. So different things you put on a kebabs, but you're putting it into a sandwich and using jackfruit instead of a lot of times it's tofu. So yummy on that. And then the pitcher. A little bit of color. Jerry's lucky because he gets to eat the ones after the pictures are taken. So there's a kebab sandwich. And then we have, let me put this down so I can balance my hands. So kebab sandwich, and then we have the Med Mediterranean roasted vegetable couscous with a tahini dressing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys tried the recipes and let us know how it, how it works out and what you think of the recipes. But I would say we've got a great dinner going tonight. Jerry's, uh, as some most people would say that are on this call that don't know Jerry or do know Jerry and stuff, and including Chef AJ will say, Jerry's a very lucky man. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to just say, we'll just kind of end it on that. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in July. And we've got two more classes coming up in July. And then at the end of the month, we are on Chef AJ's channel. So we're going to be making true kebabs there. So hope you guys join us and we'll talk to you soon. Put that down. Bye. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.